Someone just this past week said to me, Father, I have a feeling that you can make a sermon just about out of anything. And I'm going to make a sermon out of taking that photograph. <laughs> now, what did you do? When we said we're going to take a photograph, and I said stand up and turn around, you did what is just naturally something that we've all learned to do, and that is to face the camera. Or I should say nowadays, the phone. <laughs> And it's important that as we take your photograph that we capture your face. In fact, capturing our face, seeing the image of one another's face is really important to us. You know, the word face in Biblical Greek, in the original Greek of the New Testament and of the Old, is prosopon. That's the Greek word for face. Now, interestingly, the same word for person is prosopon. So if you see someone's face, you see the person. And when you see the person, you see their face. And I did the research. I looked. There are numerous uses in the New Testament of the word prosopon. Perhaps maybe one of the most famous uses of the word occurs in Luke's Gospel, which we just read from. We read from the account of the Good Samaritan. In that passage of Scripture, a young man comes to Jesus and says, you know, what do I need to do to get to heaven? It's a good question, right? Have you ever thought of asking that question? It's a good question. What do I need to do? to get into heaven. And the Lord tells him, he says, well, the commandments. And the young man lists, uh, or Jesus lists them, and the young man says, you know, I've, I've done those, what do I still lack? And Jesus goes on to tell the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, in Luke's Gospel, we also find an account of Jesus going up on a mountain. And he goes up on that mountain, with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. And when he gets to the top of the mountain, his face begins to shine like the sun. And the disciples see in Jesus' face, in his person, the glory of God. Now, if we start to equate that to ourselves and we wonder, when I see someone's face, do I see the image of God? Do they radiate God? Now, in the parable, as I just described it, this young man asked Jesus how he might inherit eternal life. Jesus says the commandments. He says, I've done all of them. And then he asked Jesus, what do I still lack? And then Jesus tells a story. And the story is about a man who was going on a road down to Jericho. Jer Jericho. He was on a journey. And while on that journey, he's robbed and beaten and left for dead. And while laying beside the road, along comes a priest. And as you're hearing Jesus tell the story, the obvious answer you have in your head is as the priest approaches the man, what's he going to do? Help him. That's what you would think, right? So I want you all to picture it. Father Evan is out and about, and I happen to see someone injured, and you think, what's Father Evan going to do? I'm going to help the guy, right? But what happens in the story? What, what? He just keeps walking. The priest just walks on by. And then a Levite comes up, and for us today, that's a weird word. A Levite is a priest's helper, so Daryl. Wave your hand, Daryl. Some of you don't, don't know Daryl. <laughs> Daryl's always here early. He's getting uh, to the church early to help me get things set up. And so I walk by, and then a few minutes later, my helpful helper, Daryl, shows up on the scene, and there's that same person. What does Daryl do? He walks on by. Now, is that what you would expect? No. No. Now, the story takes its most wild turn in the third character. The third person to come across the man who's suffering is a Samaritan. And as my 
family went over this passage of scripture, my daughters had lots of questions about, you know, what's a Samaritan? Does anybody know a Samaritan? You're a Samaritan! Oh, Scott's a Samaritan. Well, we hope. Anybody know an actual Samaritan? I've never met one. So who, who were the Samaritans? Who were the Samaritans in Jesus' time? They were the what? They were the lesser people. What's another word for them? A minority. What else? A half-breed. Any other words? An enemy. A loser. The last person you would have thought that Jesus would have used to help the man who had been robbed is a Samaritan. You know, what's the equivalent in our society today? I don't know. Can you tell me? Does anybody have an idea? Who would be the Samaritan in our day? Homeless. Okay, a homeless person. Someone who's down and out. That would be maybe a Samaritan. Who else would be a Samaritan? An immigrant. An illegal immigrant. A gay person. A gay person. A gang person. A gang person. Who else would be a Samaritan? A new ager. It depends on where you are. All right, but, but the Samaritan is always the person that we think can't help, won't help, won't do anything to alleviate the sufferings of another. It's someone that we really have a low opinion of. And what happens in the story? The Samaritan helps the man. Not only does he bind up his wounds, but he puts him on his own beast of burden, sort of sticks him in the car, drives him to an inn, and an inn would have been a place that not only you could room at and get food at, but you could get medical services. It's a little bit like um, a full service hospital today. You know, you stay there, you eat there, and the caregiver's there. And he takes him to this place and he says to the man who's in charge, look, I'm going to leave this guy here. He needs attention. Here's some money in advance to take care of him. And when I come back, if you've spent more than I've left you, don't worry. I'll take care of the bill. Okay? That's the story that Jesus tells the rich man who wants to know about what he lacks. And then he sends him off with the statement, go and do likewise. Now, interestingly... If you look at the icon, you know we have icons in the church, here's one of Jesus, there's one of Mary, there's one of the crucified Lord. We have lots of icons in the church, and we have icons of the stories that we find in the Bible. And if you go home today, Google the image, icon of the Good Samaritan. You'll get lots. And as you look at the images, you'll notice something unusual. The Good Samaritan in the icon is depicted as Jesus. And you'll also see the other characters. You'll see the priest, the Levite, and you'll see the innkeeper, and of course you'll see the man who has been robbed and beaten. But there's something very interesting about the image that's painted to commemorate this biblical story. The priest and the Levite are shown walking looking like this. Not looking at the face, not looking into the eyes of the man who's been robbed and beaten. In juxtaposition, Jesus is shown up close with his face in the face of the other man looking in his eyes. I think that one of the challenges that I have with the suffering, the sick, the addicted, the homeless, is that I don't see a person who's suffering. I don't look at their face. Instead, I see their problem. The homeless don't have a job or didn't get an education. The immigrant is illegal and shouldn't be here. The poor has squandered their resources. The addicted likes drugs. I tend to see the problem, but I don't see them.
Do I see their face? As the icon represents it, Christ sees the person. And I don't. Like the Levite, like the priest, I walk on by looking the other way. I think the challenge of this parable is rather direct. It asks us not only to serve others, but to do so up and close and personal. We are asked to see and know the man or the woman who is in need. And if I'm honest, that's certainly more than I've been willing to give. It's easier to give money, isn't it? It's easier to invest yourself in a program that brings medicine to the sick. And it's totally another thing to get to know them. Now, I don't think the one is wrong, and neither does Christ. But he's asking us to do something more. And what he's asking us to do just might be the way to unlocking our compassion. In other words, I think Jesus is telling us in the parable, if you see the person, if you look into their face, then perhaps you may even see a bit of yourselves. I recently listened to a historical podcast about the um, concentration camps. And it went through uh, a detail of how the people who were brought in were dehumanized. One of the things they were told when they got off the trains was to look at the ground. They weren't allowed to show their faces. They couldn't give their name, they were given a number. And as I looked on the internet, I came across a host of images in which a person's face was removed. It was photoshopped, I guess. And those photos were disturbing and unnerving. When we turn our face away from those in need, then we no longer see the person and we no longer see a need to help them. But if we can see who they are, just like in this photograph, stand up, turn around, make sure we can see you. We want to look into your eyes. It's my guess that Jesus wants us to see the face of the poor, to know their names, just as in last week's parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Notice that Lazarus did not know the name of the rich man, though he lived on his estate. But the rich man knew his name and didn't help him. And so I'm convicted this morning as I read the parable and wrote this sermon that I need to look more deeply into the faces and thus the persons that I encounter in the hopes that my charity and love will increase. And I honestly pray as we enter into this season of giving, that my ability to give and of myself may increase. May God help me and may he help us all. Amen.